everybody, and welcome again to the St. Francis Hospital Cardiac Imaging Lecture Series. Today we have an interesting case of LVOT obstruction after mitral valve surgery. We will discuss this case in detail in continuation of our prior video of how to predict the risk of LVOT obstruction in somebody undergoing mitral valve surgery. Okay, our case study is a 54-year-old man with a history of cardiac murmur over many years with no other significant past medical history that on echo had increase in mitral regurgitation associated with dilation of his left ventricle and left atrium. So he was referred for mitral valve surgery. In the OR, we have some live 3D views and we could see this Barlow's-like appearance with bileaflet prolapse. As we can see on the color Doppler imaging, the coaptation line for mitral regurgitation is pretty significant. Furthermore, we can note on these images that cortal SAM is also evident. And uh, despite the cortal SAM, we can see that there is no LVOT obstruction. The, we had calculated the risk factors for this patient with our prior video. And uh, the main thing here is the presence of pre-existing cortal SAM and a ratio of anterior leaflet to posterior leaflet length of 1.59. So the risk for cortal SAM to the patient was increased and this was relayed to the surgeon. Uh, however, since the patient was young, the surgeon felt that it was necessary to do a mitral valve repair instead of a replacement. Here are post-operative images. In this view, we have live 3D and we can see the annulus here on the left from the atrial aspect. And we can see the Barlow's valve that was repaired from the ventricular aspect. Furthermore, right before coming off pump, we can see that there's still cortal SAM. However, this is before coming off pump and one has to be very careful to make any notes about LVOT obstruction in this scenario, because here there wasn't any color Doppler acceleration. However, with after coming off pump, uh, as we can see, there was significant SAM and obstruction in the LVOT manifesting with angry looking jet in the left ventricular outflow track and concomitant SAM with mitral regurgitation. Uh, and this is typical of what you see. Uh, you have your SAM, you, you have the obstruction causing flow acceleration and the same jet connects with the mitral regurgitation. So this is significant post-operative mitral regurgitation, like severe mitral regurgitation in the setting of SAM after a repair. We see that the left ventricle is preserved and we go furthermore in the transgastric view to look for gradient. And on top of the severe mitral regurgitation from the SAM, we have a peak gradient of 114 millimeters of mercury. Clearly, this is not acceptable. And now the next thing that needs to be done is going to be a mitral valve replacement, which adds to the amount of bypass time the person has already been on. Before that was done, there was an attempt to do some maneuvers to see if the SAM would improve. And as we know, the, the obstruction can be dynamic and can be responsive to volume loading or an increase in afterload, as you see normally with IHSS. So it's worth a try. And here clearly we can see 
that the amount of mitral regurgitation and SAM has decreased with some of these maneuvers. However, quickly thereafter, it goes back to be in severe mitral regurgitation. So clearly, this is not a durable, acceptable result, and a mitral valve replacement is in order. Furthermore, even though there was some improvement in the SAM, the resulting gradient was still unacceptable, 72 millimeters of mercury. It was decided that the person would best get a bioprosthetic valve, as we could see here in 3D from the atrial aspect. And on the left, it's from the atrial aspect, and on the right is from the ventricular aspect. And we can see that the valve looks good other than this little flow at 12 o'clock, which is a very small paravalvular leak. Now, it may be worthwhile going back and put in an extra stitch in that area. However, the patient had been under significant bypass time. And given the fact that the paravalvular leak was just very small, it was decided uh, against doing this. So clearly we could see with a bioprosthesis, SAM is no longer present. There is no more an LVOT obstruction and the gradient across the LVOT is non-existent. So what can we see from this case? We can see that SAM after mitral valve repair indeed can be predictable from the risk factors that we discussed. And the fact that there's any kind of SAM, even if it's of the cordal attachments, pre-op, it's not a good start, especially when you have these redundant mitral leaflets that are prolapsing throughout the anterior and posterior leaflet throughout the majority of its surface area, consistent with a Barlow's valve. So it's important to relay these parameters to the OR team. Furthermore, it's important to do an accurate post-operative assessment and consider the hemodynamics while you're doing the assessment. So you want to make sure that you have adequate preload so that any SAM is not exaggerated and adequate afterload. Blood pressure is not abnormally low. And you must be patient for these parameters to get optimized before you make a final call on the degree of SAM, the degree of mitral regurgitation, and the degree of outflow obstruction. There's some additional videos. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, including the risk factor video that we talked about, and another video how to quickly and accurately determine the aortomitral angle in probably less than one minute uh, in the operating room.